All right. Hello, and my name is John Michael Collins. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. Before we get started, the music you just heard is fun, it's upbeat, and in a way kind of depicts me. I would like to thank and give a very special shout out to my friends Marino and Noah Correa, who provided the music for this project. They're part of a company called Cinema Sonic, which is a company dedicated to providing quality audio and visual works for your next project. They're planning on opening a new studio in the Seattle area catering to professional level podcast production. If you would like to learn more, visit their website at cinema-sonic.com. Cinema as in a movie cinema, hyphen, sonic as in supersonic, dot com. I'm here just talking into a microphone. I really want to do this as a way for me to get my thoughts out there, just for me to get them out of my head, because I've had them inside of my head for so long, it just gets overwhelming, and sometimes I just... Like last week, I told myself on my way home from work, okay, no more talking before you get home, so shut up. (laughs) That's how bad it is sometimes. I just keep talking, and if you know me really well, you know that I like to talk a lot, and I have a lot of ideas that... Anyway, so why am I here? Yeah, I told you I'm here because I just want to talk about my thoughts. Me, talk about me. It's all about me talk about my thoughts, get my thoughts just out of my head so I can visualize them audibly, I guess. Yeah, let's go with that. There's been something unique, something intrinsic about me. We all have that quality with us. I don't know how unique your life is, but I know how unique my life is. And to be honest, if I were to spend the same amount of time that I spent getting to know your life while getting to know my life, I'd probably go insane. Not anything based off of you, just I'm not a computer and I can't process that much data, uh, even though I like to think so sometimes and get ahead of myself. But people have called me a weirdo. I'm not a normal person. People have told me that I confuse them. I recently started to notice patterns, and that's a pattern that I've noticed that I confuse people. and. If I'm explaining something to someone about me or just something in general, like rocket ships and how they work, I'll say blah, 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 if that makes sense. And I say that in the hopes that someone, in the hopes that they agree that it made sense. And I wonder sometimes if it actually made sense or if they're just agreeing to be agreeable. Uh, So I have some notes here. Hopefully, as I go along, it'll get easier for me to get kind of a routine going. I'm most comfortable around myself. If you don't already know me, I hope that through this experience of listening, you get to know a little bit about me. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm not here to seek praise and glory from anyone. I'm just doing this recording thing as a therapeutic exercise. And since I'm into uh, voiceover, I thought this would be a really cool exercise. And who knows? Only God knows where it'll go. So what I plan to do, uh, the first, I wrote down five episodes. I'm going to introduce my life. Maybe I don't need to do that. We'll see how it goes just as I keep talking. Uh, Every week after the initial weeks of me talking about who I am, I'll just talk about something random, weird, ironic, or silly, which either happened to me that week or in the past. And I, I kind of have a formula how I'm going to talk about things. And if you like patterns, yeah, you might be able to figure out what my, uh, <laughs> you might be able to figure out what, what the formula is. It's nothing fancy, or maybe it is fancy. I said I will aim to keep this at 10 minutes, but I set my timer for 14 minutes. I've just been rambling along. I'm a talker. Yeah, so there I I wrote, I'm a talker, so maybe 20, probably 20. I am calling this, I'm going to call it genuinely quirky things. So people who know me well have either called me authentic or genuine. People who know me well have either called me quirky or weird. 
And uh, there's a lot of things in my life to unpack. So, yeah, bullet point number one, JMC. Uh, That's me, John Michael Collins. I am currently, at the time of recording, shy of being 27 years old. I am from Fort Collins. No, just kidding. I'm from Fort Morgan, Colorado. I grew up in Fort Collins, Colorado. When, uh, When I ask people where they're from, they say... They don't say where they were born, and I get really technical and snooty sometimes about things, so then I ask them, where were you born? What's your birth certificate say? So from Fort Collins, Colorado, that's northeastern Colorado, shout out to my peeps, you know who you are. Anyway, uh, yeah, so from Colorado, I have childhood, pre-adult, new adult, new adult, bullet pointed. First through sixth grade, I went to a school called Rivendell. And this school, it was it was unique. It is still unique. I love that school. It taught me a lot. It was like a foundation to who I am. And I've grown a lot from it. If you read books, then you might be able to figure out where that name is from. The inspiration of which it came. There was that school. Seventh to ninth grade, I went to two different two and a half different schools I went to a school named Lesher and the second one and a half schools was named is named was named Pioneer and then it turned into Polaris but I had a lot of fun there uh, because we did stuff our own way and yeah I learned there that I like being weird and I learned to embrace that weirdness and uh yeah I did a lot of cool things, such as uh, learn about cooking for a week. Uh, We took a field trip to Santa Fe, New Mexico, a field trip to Moab, Utah, and other places, I think. It was fun. Yeah, it was, yeah. I'm just stumbling upon my words. It's okay, because I'm just talking to me, and it's not like I'm performing for anyone, so I can just be myself here in this booth, and it's okay. 10th to 12th grade, I went to another two different schools. Uh, The first one was Fort Collins High School. I went there from 10th grade to 11... No, 10th grade to 11th grade. Yeah, 10th grade to 11th grade. That school was a big school. There were a lot of people there, and I had a lot of cool friends. I started meeting a lot of cool friends. Uh, There I was like, I wish I had a lot of friends because up until this point, I've... I've had friends, but I want more friends because I want to be popular. Um, The second school was Maquoketa High School in eastern Iowa. Iowa? Why Iowa? Well, just family things. We all have choices to make based off of family things at one point or another sometime. That school was smaller. It was mid-sized. My class was, I think, 150 people, though school before that was like a hundred out 350 people at that school I actually started making a lot of friends believe it or not uh, <laughs> next point I after I graduated from high school I went to Iowa State University in Ames Iowa where I majored in becoming myself um, I threw a dart at the dartboard and landed in the Department of Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering. I remained in that department the whole time I was in college. I just switched majors around. But long story short, what I ended up with was an industrial technology degree, which is a super confusing degree. Uh, It's on no job application unless you're in Iowa and the company is affiliated with that school. Industrial technology is basically... I I tell people it's like a hybrid between mechanical engineering and industrial engineering, but it's more hands-on. I'm a hybrid of those two things, but I'm not an engineer, which is why it makes it difficult when applying for jobs. Anyway, I was a peer mentor for a handful of years. I was a student in in the department, obviously, and I just oriented new students and taught them things about how to be a good student and get your work in and accountability and time management and stuff like that. 
I was a college mascot for two and a half years. It was awesome. I got to dress up in a big red bird suit. Red is my favorite color. I went to mascot camp twice. Learned so many cool things about mascotting, but... Yeah, you could send me emails or something about that, and maybe I'll talk about it, because that deserves its own category, or own own uh, inquiry, captain's log, whatever, <laughs> stardate. Uh, anyway, the big thing I learned was I got closer to understanding my full potential of how I can be free with who I am in front of lots and lots of people. So we all struggle with this thing called social anxiety, and that is faced a lot in public speaking. You get in front of people, and then you get super nervous. Long story short, I was in front of a lot of people, and I was able to be myself and just go crazy and dance, and I couldn't talk, but did whatever the heck I wanted to in front of a bunch of people. I kept it G-rated, of course, because the mascot's a family bird. And, yeah, nobody likes a fun ruiner. I started drinking coffee in college. I always thought it was gross. The smell, I liked the smell. So basically what happened is one day I started drinking it, but I was putting coffee and creamer and sugar in it, and I loved it. I still love it. But then at one point, just learning about time management, I was like, Okay, putting all this stuff in takes way too much time, so I'm just going to drink it black. So I went from being reliant on sugar to just drinking it black. Yeah, I loved it. My next point, Maple Craner. That was the floor that I lived on. I met a bunch of cool friends on that floor. This is now, oh boy, uh, like nine or ten years ago that I started there. Wow, that was cool. Yeah, I didn't really know anyone, and then my roommate, we didn't really talk for a while. He started hanging out with the floor mates, and then one day I was like, I want to be like him. I want to hang out with the floor mates. I met another floor mate while I was being a studious student and doing my homework. I was like, hey, can I hang out with you and your friends? I want to make friends. So, truth be told, what happened is I hung out with that guy and became friends with, like, all of his friends. It was like the first week of class, and my teacher was like, hey, if anyone's interested in studying abroad, we have this program to go to Taiwan. That was a great experience because I started to learn that I can really get along and interact with anyone. Not just people here, but I can befriend other people, like people in another country. I loved each person that I met. Uh, The food was great. I had a friend who super awesomely made a list of every food that I had while I was there. Maybe not every food, like the snacks I ate when he wasn't around, but uh, whenever he took me out to go eat food, he made a list. And the coolest, maybe not the coolest, but the most interesting food that I had while I was there was caviar. Fresh caviar straight from the fish. We were at a restaurant, and this guy throws this uh, cooked fish right in front of my friend and I, and my friend takes his chopsticks and, yeah, just gives me a spoonful of caviar, which you can imagine how that might have looked. I won't explain it. Anyway, then I have three points left under college. I worked at a farm co-op where... I was a crop scout, which for those of you in not in the Midwest, what that means is it's someone who goes out and scouts crops. So specifically what I was looking for were bugs because bugs can be bad or good, but they can eat your plants and decrease the amount of corn, soybeans, or whatever you're planting. So you kind of want to get them away There's a reason they call them pests. But that's not the only thing I was looking for. We were looking for what are called micro and macronutrient deficiencies. Basically what that means is there are certain chemicals that a plant requires to grow efficiently. 
the three basic ones, including uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK. So it was interesting because I would go around to these different fields. I would take a, a tissue sample from each plant and uh, put them in a little baggie, and the bag would get sent off to a, the company, and the company would test that sample for those three chemicals plus, I don't know, ten other ones. But basically what that helps the farmer do is like, okay, we don't need to, hold on, quick thought to go alongside of this. When farmers fertilize their crops or when gardeners fertilize their plants, they're putting a certain amount of chemicals on those plants to help them grow. So this data helps the farmer to know, okay, maybe this part of the field I don't have to put on as much nitrogen or this part of the field I don't have to put on as much phosphorus, or this part of the field there's too much nitrogen, so I don't have to put on any at all. So I don't have to buy fertilizer that has nitrogen in it so I can save money. Basically, it was helping the farmer to save money. That's, that's what the, uh, the internship was. Uh, then I worked at a printing company, and what we did there was we made... Wedding invitations, stationery, certain like school books for kids or workbooks, workbooks. Pretty cool. That was a bunch of fun and I met cool people there. And then my last bullet point is TSC, which stands for the Salt Company. So the Salt Company is not a company that manufactures salt. The Salt Company is a church organization that ministers to college students. So I didn't grow up in the church. I always called myself a Christian, but if you were to ask me at the time who Jesus was, I would be like, who? I always had this thought of uh, that there was a higher being in the cosmos, but I didn't know who it was. Um, anyway, the Salt Company, a college ministry preaching the good news of Jesus Christ to college students and just doing life with them, uh, which means just being friends, giving them a place to hang out, which was super sweet. I got involved because the year prior, I was in a very dark space. It was actually 10 months prior. I was in a very dark space where I no longer wanted to live anymore. I had this feeling to evaluate my life and I felt that I I was loved and I was adored and valued. And at the time, I, I didn't really know where that came from. I just knew that I was convinced that I wanted to commit suicide. So from that point, 10 months later, I decided, you know what? I'm at a place where nothing in life is worth it, so I'll give this church thing a try and see what happens. So, gosh, that was six or seven years ago. Clearly, it didn't fail. Jesus didn't fail. It was one day when one of the pastors was talking, and he was talking about a wheel and having us imagine the center of the wheel and asked us the question, what? in our lives is what in my life is the center of the wheel. And so there were two things that I wanted at the center of my wheel. One was manufacturing marijuana the rest of my life, and the other one was having a relationship with God, the creator of the universe, the father of Jesus Christ. And I knew I was instantly convicted. I was instantly sold on the idea that having a relationship with God was going to win, so I gave up the other one. And I was pretty certain that my purpose was to grow marijuana the rest of my life, <laughs> but I'm not doing that, and I don't plan to do that. Yeah. So I just one day decided, Jesus, I can't do this life on my own. I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect by my own achievement, so I give my life to you. I want to find purpose and value and know my place in this world. So there you have it. I got baptized, which is a public declaration of your faith. It's nothing magical, but it's, it's, 
it's definitely an internal experience, but it doesn't save you from anything. What saves you is your decision whether or not to follow Jesus and just love him and accept him into your heart. So, after college, that's college, that's gone, we have new adult. My first bullet point, the first few years in the real world, I went to the country of Albania on a missions trip, just meeting a bunch of cool people, spending time with them, drinking lots and lots of coffee, oh my goodness, teaching English, and asking people if they've heard of Christianity and if they know about Jesus, which was really sweet. And I love each person that I met. You know who you are. And I tell you all the time that I'll see you again someday because I want to go back there. Someday. That place was super cool and super sweet. After that, I have what's called a Meritour. That term came about one day. I was with my friend. If you're listening, you know who you are. That you gave me the, the term Ameritour, which I toured America by myself. This was a this was a twelve thousand nine hundred sixty eight thousand mile road trip around the U.S., starting on the East Coast and then moving to the West Coast. And I met a lot of people. This trip initially started as me just wanting to go to Yellowstone, spend time with family, go see a couple places, and eventually, through prayer, actually. It turned into this Ameritour, which I don't know how many stops I made. I just know that I filled up my gas tank 40 times. <laughs> so pretty even, uh, roughly 20, 20 fill-ups per side of the country, split right down the Mississippi River. And just a little more perspective, it was two and a half months. I'm super, super grateful that I had the opportunity to do that. It was by myself. It would have been nice to have someone along so I could take pictures and not take pictures while I was driving. Just kidding, I didn't do that a lot, but that was sweet. You're probably wondering what my favorite part was. I usually tell people New England, the northeast part of the country, or Disney World. So I went to Disney World for a little over a few hours, maybe three or four, and it was sweet. I... Luckily, no, not luckily, I fortunately am in debt to the person who brought me there because they worked there, and I got to go in for free. And we went on a couple different rides. I cried on the It's a Small World ride because I, I'm indebted to my sisters and my mom for just showing me how to be emotional and to <laughs> cry. So that was super sweet. And of course, I loved everywhere else I went. I do have some blog posts about it, about each state I was in, actually. I went to a lot of states. After that, I have barista. I was a barista for 13 months. And this is where I really got to interact with people uh, and drink a lot of coffee every day. (sighs) I'm tired. Yeah, drink a lot of coffee every day. And uh, just really get to learn how to be efficient, time efficient. I actually got to apply what I learned in college. Oftentimes people are like, how are you going to use your degree? Well, (laughs) I used it at a coffee shop where you don't need a degree, a college degree to work. Everywhere I've worked, I haven't needed a college degree, which is okay. I'm super grateful for my college degree. It's just a piece of paper. And like I said, I went to school for understanding myself. I majored in me. (laughs) Back to the coffee shop. I met a lot of cool people. You know who you are. I love you. You are awesome people. And thanks for listening to me talk all the time about super wacky ideas, quirky, weird things. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. After, or... While I was a barista, I was a youth leader. So what that means is I taught under a leader in the church. I taught seventh graders about Jesus, and I read the Bible with them, and I played games with them, and I was just kind of like a big brother. 
a friend. Like when you were younger, you wanted that big best friend or that big good friend. And that was me and other people that were other leaders, which was super awesome. Everything is super awesome. (laughs) Right after that, I got the super cool opportunity to travel to Israel. So there's a, a band, a worship team from a church in Australia named Hillsong Church. And they were like, we're going to Israel. If anyone wants to come hang out with us, this is all verbatim. They didn't say this, but this is how I interpreted it. Like, hey, if you want to hang out, come join us. So I did. I prayed about it. So I went. And it was super sweet because the Bible, the book a lot of people don't like, it's basically a giant history book, which is super awesome. It came to life, and all the stories, or a lot of the stories that I read in it, some just went over my head, but a lot of the stories I read in it, uh, we got to go to those places such as the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus went right before he was crucified. And other places like the Temple of Jerusalem, which was pretty much right across the street from the garden. Also got to go to Bethlehem, where baby Jesus was lying in a manger. And people were coming to try and kill him. But it was super cool because there were lots of people there that day. All days, there were lots of people there. Went to other places like Caesarea Maritima. uh, What else? The Sea of Galilee and the southern tip of the Sea of Galilee. So those last four places, we had church with Hillsong and got to worship with them, which was super awesome. And I endorse anyone who wants to go to Israel, whether you're a Christian or not just to really experience what it's like to be in such a rich historical place. I have the Twin Cities. Yeah, so I lived in the Twin Cities for three and a half months. I was helping with a a new church plant, just kind of a, a support, an extra family member there. Was looking for work, didn't really find work. So I moved. I moved to be closer to family all the way to Seattle. So lived right downtown for a month and a half (laughs) with three people and a few occasional Airbnb guests, which was, oh my gosh, insane. So there were like four of us and then Airbnb guests in a studio apartment. So yeah, after living downtown, I lived in a house with a bunch of uh, college students, like four college students, three or four college students who were football players at the University of Washington, which was fun and weird. Yeah, but it was fun. I love those guys. Everybody I talk about in this, if you're listening, just know that I love you and that you're loved. And thanks for being, thanks for withstanding me. You rock. And that, so yeah, I lived in with the college students for like six or eight months. And then I moved to a place where I, um, I live by myself now. I'm super grateful that I could do that. Also, alongside with the people comments, please take note that I'm super grateful for every single experience that I talk about. And I wish that other people could have awesome experiences is experiences like that also. So this, another reason I'm kind of talking is that I just want to find ways to share things with people. The stories, not, not to boast about the things, but to share stories. So that's kind of what this whole thing also is about. Not only me writing a diary for myself, explaining my experiences to myself. What do people like more than stories? except coffee. (laughs) Coffee's great, but stories are pretty cool. And so that's why I want to talk. Yeah, I had, I, yeah, God is good. Uh, if you ever get the chance to drink coffee or make a, uh, or make a latte, do it because it's awesome. Uh, 
It's been overwhelming. Um, just everything has been overwhelming. There's a lot of things. It's nice to talk about them, get them out of my uh, cranium up here. That's kind of a, a general update. So in the future, things won't be this long. This was just kind of the nuts and bolts. I originally thought to do like five episodes where I introduce my life and the purpose of this content. And just like anything, you just kind of keep doing it. And over time, you hone in more and more on why you're doing it, who you're doing it for, but not to seek applause or likes or comments. I'm a very open book. If you can't tell, if none of this made sense, <laughs> there it is. If any of that made sense, I'd love to know what you think. I look forward to uh, just doing this more, just talking aloud, and I'm excited. Wow, my voice is kind of, sorry if my voice is bugging you. Maybe it could be like a podcast you listen to while you go to sleep, just to help you fall asleep because it might be so boring. And if if that's what, what happens, then that's okay. But, uh, yeah. Um, hmm, what else should I talk about in the... How much time do I have left? I have all the time I want, but... Okay, let's say five minutes. We're coming to a wrap. And by the time I edit this, I'll have taken out so many ums, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> so my last thoughts stories will be pg-13 at the most this is just a let's see a diamond mine of content for me to process vocally oh that's my brain a diamond mine of content <laughs> cool who wrote this and you're super awesome and i look forward to uh doing this again this was nice it won't be as long i promise 20 minutes max I really want to thank you from the deepest part of my heart for tuning in to this episode. Please feel free to share this with your family and friends and anyone and everyone you know. And also, if you don't mind, head over to my website, which acts as my creative portfolio. JohnMichaelCollins.com Smells like chicken in here. Thanks for listening. Yeah.